Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the Cookie Chat Live, episode nine, pre-sale 101. We're so excited to be here with you guys tonight and be talking all about pre-sale. So we know you guys had a ton of questions this week and we're here to bring it to you along with our special guest, Amanda, you guys. So welcome. Hello. Hello. Let's see here. I'm going to get my other half on and we're going to get started. Hello. You're here. You have arrived. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Let me back this up now. All right. We are good to go. Happy Wednesday. Happy How's your week? Wednesday. How's my week? Oh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> this is the weekend yet. <laughs> the little one goes back next week, right? So this Tuesday. is Tuesday. She goes back. Oh my gosh. Tuesday. Yes. Kind of we met counting the down the days. We met. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we met the teachers today. We're ready. She bounded in there. She's normally like or like more like quiet, wants to be at home, mm -hmm. but she's very excited. So uh, that makes it um. Easy. Somebody is watching from their beach condo. Hello, take us with you. I know. You know what's funny? Somebody accidentally included me on an itinerary. Oh, there's Ford. <laughs> Somebody accidentally included me on an itinerary email for this like amazing vacation. And I don't know how I ended up on, I guess they were looking for another Melissa or Missy or something like that. And I was like, regretfully, I think you have the wrong Melissa. But oh my gosh. Did you hear about the guy that was asked I think it was like to go to the bachelor party or something like they text the wrong number did he go yeah he just like started talking to them like hey thanks for the invite and it started as a joke and they actually were like dude you should come and he went and now he's going to like all of their family functions and everything he's totally a seven was it Tommy yeah. <laughs> right right if you guys don't know my husband that like he makes friends with everybody like when we go to Disney and we get off the trams and stuff, he's like, oh, bye. See you later, Paul. Yeah, text me. I love, my <laughs> I love that. He's the joke that once like you get off the plane and you're like invited to someone's wedding. Yeah. That's my husband. Oh, yes. I, I love that. I know. So fun. But you guys, we're so happy you're here. We are talking big topic of pre-sale. We actually had this plan for a little bit later, but then mm -hmm. all of the Halloween cutters start coming out and Chelsea and I are starting to plan our stuff and we're like, we should probably move this ahead because we need to be talking about this now. Yes. Yes. I feel like it's on everybody's mind. Tell us below if you've already started planning the next um, holiday season. I have. We're just going to call uh, it because it's not even just a month or the next holiday. It's like, I know. Who's thinking Valentine's yet? Because cookie ears are I know I'm on, but, like I might take Valentine's <laughs> off <laughs> it is it's a lot but we're here we're gonna hopefully help you guys so it's a smooth transition you're prepared so we're gonna have a little bit of a different type of um, stream we're gonna give you all the tips and tricks but we want to make sure that we are answering your guys's questions also yes so if you guys do have questions drop them below and we'll try grabbing them as we go we do have some that you guys sent in but we are trying the best to serve you guys. So, that being said, I know you mentioned Halloween, and now it's on my mind. Are you decorating for Halloween? Do you guys decorate? Oh, yes. I am. So, we did a little bit in the old house. I have um, this really cute string art skull that I made that's, like, my favorite. Mm -hmm. But we didn't have that many, like, ledges in the old house, if that makes sense. Like, not many bookcases. It was pretty minimal. So I felt like there weren't as many opportunities to decorate. And this yeah. house, it's like bookcases all over the place and like this beautiful mantle. And this neighborhood goes bananas for Halloween. So oh, nice. I am very excited. I'm like literally writing it on my calendar. Like, okay, need to spend this weekend decorating because I need to do it. And you, I know you go all out oh, for yeah. Halloween. Yes, we go all out. We usually host the family Halloween party for our friends' family block. So, yeah, that's we've, so we've accumulated, that's for sure. So, yeah. Halloween and Christmas, I decorate the most for. And fall, in just general. <laughs> but, yes. Um, awesome. Do you just want to jump into it? Yeah. I feel like we have so much. Okay. 
So you guys, we are going to kick it off, but before we do, we want to make sure and let you guys know that very similar to what we discussed when we did our budget pricing episode, pre-sale is very specific to each cookier and your region, your level, all of those good things. There's a lot of different factors that can play into this. So by no means are Melissa and I keepers of all answers and our way is the best way. These are just suggestions and things that hopefully you guys can, again, add to that tool belt and pull from them as needed, yeah. but take what works, leave what doesn't, and know that there is no perfect way to do this as long as your customers are serviced and you are happy and in love at the end of holiday season, that's what matters. So right. let's get into it. So Melissa, do you want to give us our quick rundown so we know what to expect? We know what we're looking forward to. I do. I do. One other quick thing I want to ask yeah. you guys is go ahead if you don't already get a pen and paper out and go ahead and jot notes down as we go Ooh. because because our schedules are starting to get crazy now that Halloween is well that all the holidays are ramping up yeah and I just want to make sure you guys have what you need and you're not like waiting around for a handout that I don't know when it'll come to you <laughs> <laughs> so um but that being said, like, we're always here to help you. You're always welcome to reach out. All of these IGTVs are saved, so you're yeah. always welcome to reference back. So um, I just don't want you guys to think that there's a handout coming, and there might not be. So take notes. Okay. Perfect. So our agenda. Yeah. We are high level going to go through timeline. Again, like Chelsea said, it you got to feel what works for you. But this is kind of like what Chelsea and I have said generally we kind of try and do. Same thing with the cutters, how, like, how you know what to purchase and when to purchase and how many, all of that stuff. And with packaging, I know that packaging is a huge one, you guys. And so, again, it's just one of those things that's kind of trial and error mm -hmm. sometimes. But we are going to try and give you guys some tips on what works for us. And then we have Miss Amanda from Night Owl Icing. Yay! She, she was on our pre-show, and we're just so excited. She's so knowledgeable about cutters and just kind of answering some of our like questions about like oh, why is it this way <laughs> and so why are we spoiled so, i know i know so we're super excited to have her on she'll be joining us later in the show mm -hmm. and can answer any of your cookie cutter questions there too and guys have has anybody taken advantage of the 15 percent off go shop, shop. <gasps> that go shop i already bagged up mine i might get more i don't know save <laughs> now because your profit will be high yes yeah, she's so nice. Okay, so for doing that, guys, that's our Woo! agenda. So Chelsea, I'm gonna pass it to you to start off our timeline. Awesome. All right, guys. So let's dive in. When we kind of arranged this, we were thinking the order to say, "Yay, we're ordered." Hey, <laughs> your baskets fell, Caroline. Yay. So we have two months out. So we we're kind of thinking in that timeline. It's kind of where we're sitting right now. So few quick rundown things. We want to be able to evaluate if you even have the bandwidth to do a pre-sale or a holiday, any type of excursion, I call it, because it really is. <laughs> so just make sure that that's even going to fit into your timeline of events. There are times where you might have to pass on a holiday, whether it be um, for personal reasons or just your schedule is craziness. I know I passed on Father's Day this year, mm -hmm. and I think it was the first time I passed on Father's yeah. Day. So it was a little bit of a shift, but I mean, make sure that that's working for you. If so, notify your audience so they can prep and be aware of what's coming. So if you say, yes, I'm doing Halloween, start letting them know that you will have Halloween or whatever your holiday might be coming yeah. up. Or if you're if passing on notes in their mind of like, okay, yes. blue basket, right? Halloween stuff would be good. Yes. And then if you are not going to be servicing, that holiday, just make sure that you do allow your customers to know because there could be other cookie years or they might be counting on that and you don't want them to be waiting till the last yeah. moment. So either way, just keep everybody in the loop. And the last thing that we kind of had within this category of a two month mark is you want to evaluate what cutters you have um, and what gaps you want to fill. So as you start to see designs or looking at designs from the prior year, you're like, oh, I love that, but I don't have those cutters. You go over to Amanda's shop and use our 15% off and you cart that and problem solved. Yes. So I know. And I feel like on that point, holiday time is, is our biggest 
purchase time, yeah. I feel like, as the gears, right? Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things of really trying to evaluate not overspending with the cookie cutters. If you have, because I definitely have holiday cutters I never used. Mm -hmm. So it's a good time to go back and say, okay, could I repurpose this? Are my skills a little different? Could this work now? Could I revamp this in another way even? Right. Or be like, okay, I really need to have a custom option mm -hmm. for this season or something mm -hmm. like that. So kind of even, it can be super helpful to not overspend by planning out exactly what you're looking for before the cutter shops are even like coming out with all of their stuff. Because then you want everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is Night Owl Icing is the cookie cutter sale and it's on our page with the code with the 15% off. So stay on our live, but afterwards pop on over yes. there. Yes, it's the cookie chat will get you the 15% off. Yes. Um, yes, Night Owl Icing. I know I love hers and she'll be on later. Okay. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, and I would say to you, one more point to that, as far as bandwidth, I know one of our questions and and again, tonight we're talking timeline, cookie cutters, packaging stuff. Yes. We will tackle designing and pricing and things like that later. But I do know one question we got asked was, how do you know how much you can handle for a pre-sale mm -hmm. as far as like your workload? And um, I, I know it's totally different for a full-timer versus a part-timer. For me, what I generally kind of thought of was one, allow yourself an entire day for packaging. It doesn't matter how many you're taking. Packaging yeah. is a B guys when it comes to pre-sale because not only are you packaging all of them with the cute bows and things, but then on top of that, you're packaging them with the order forms and their entire order. It takes a lot of time. Um, so a lot more time than you could think. Does. It really does. I know I'll sit down and be like, Oh, I'll be to bed by nine. And it's like midnight. I'm like, how does it take this long to yeah. put all these together? Um, so plan for that, but I generally say, because you're whipping out the same design over and over, I generally say whatever you can handle in a really busy week of customs, mm -hmm. plus maybe like another two or three dozen is what I say can be a general place to start. And no, it will still be a busy week. Like oh, you're yeah. not going to be taking much. It will still be a crazy week. But I would say that's kind of where I would try and cap it. What would you say? I'm probably not the best to ask. So let's I go know. With that. <laughs> You're like, this is my livelihood. So as much as I can take. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Without forgoing my sleep. Um, but I'll preface that by saying I, I will post during my holiday week so you guys can see. Yeah. I got, I've built up to what I take and on now. You and you bring in help. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. If you, if if you as, guys a full -timer, can... as a full timer during the holiday, hire help. Like you just, you have literally. To. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's the or you don't even, sometimes family just wants to come hang out with you and it's your busiest season and you're like, yeah, you guys want to come over for dinner and like, yeah. uh, make those package cookies package. Yes. <laughs> or just like make dinner for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, exactly. No, they're amazing on that. But yes. Um, if you're doing that, start thinking of that. That is something I would add, I guess, onto your two month s is start thinking of that help that you might need and seriously so. i would also like i've thrown it out before i'm like hey friend i'll give you free cookies for your teachers if you want to come help me package right. like a certain exactly i mean yes. it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be money it can just be like hey here's a code for 10 free cookies come help me package and that's or i'll it. make you guys like your family function you want a dozen for your family function like you yeah. can take it there so yeah 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 Okay, so that's our two month out mm -hmm. quantity talk. Okay, so now we're talking about six weeks to about one month out. Okay, it's time to buy the cookie cutters. <laughs> it's time to get them. So you wanna be looking for the sales, promo codes, things like that. Again, try and stick to your list. Try not to overbuy. And also look at things that can work for other things. I mean, Christmas trees work wonderfully for woodland sets, you know? like. Try and buy things that are a little bit versatile. Halloween has a lot of moons that can work great in baby shower sets too. So apples uh, and pumpkins can be switched out. Yeah. For a teacher, like the plaques that have the pumpkins on top, yes. those can be super cute for um, like teacher appreciation as an apple. So totally. Just totally. adding things uh, like that. 
buy those also if you are gonna do paint your owns be buying those palettes and those paint brushes as soon oh. as they come out those tend to go so so fast. correct they do so fast so buy those if you know for sure you're gonna do it <laughs> buy those um and then begin to start thinking through as you're buying cutters start thinking through your color schemes your design start looking at um, the decor in the stores that's coming out start looking at the print shops that do the backers and the packaging What are they? You know, what are their color schemes? What are their designs and start letting that start to resonate because that'll help you feel a little less Chaotic mm -hmm. in the buying process and a little bit more focused. Correct. Um So and it also allows you because you should also be buying packaging bows that's one of Chelsea and I's favorites yes. that we get excited about. <laughs> I Let me do my, that. Yes. I just got my Nashville Wraps bow collection in. So for me, I know like I do a lot of black detailing. I love mm -hmm. the black and white bows. Um, blue or I did um, some silver bows, I think this time. I Ooh. got some uh, that like really pretty camel color satin ones mm -hmm. because for Thanksgiving, I'm thinking that would be in my wheelhouse. Um, but yeah, it helps you do that. And I know that Chelsea does these amazing custom bows. So she's buying a ton of ribbon. Oh yeah. Too. You guys, yeah. it's a project. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then also evaluate what boxes you have on hand mm -hmm. and be buying those again. We will get into the box discussion later, but this is the time that you want to be buying those and be ahead of the game on that too. And then if you have time, when you are about six weeks to a month out, go ahead and make your samples. Just, <laughs> if you have time. <laughs> we all have the best of intentions when it comes to samples. I'm always like, why can't I just print out my idea? Like design it and print it out somewhere. I know. Yeah. I know. I've actually, I've really tried to start writing it and scheduling it in on my calendar yes. to actually do it. Yes. Yeah. No, I agree on that. That is, um, which kind of leads us into our next category of three weeks to a month out yeah. Yeah. is make the samples. Yeah. At, at this point, if you don't have your samples made, you might want to get gonna buy it if they don't know what you're selling. Right. And do, do not, I'm just going to put that out here, but I know our wonderful community would not do this. It just is more prevalent. You see people posting about it in their stories. Don't take someone else's cookie and say, hey, I'm doing the same design. No, you, you need to make your samples. Yeah. So it's one thing if, if somebody's showing that to you for design inspiration for something. Right. So yeah, don't sell somebody else's exact design as your no. own. No, I can't take Melissa's cookies and be like, I'll do this too. Nope. No. Wouldn't that be nice? But no. Yeah. Um, I begin say if you're repeating a design oh, though. Yeah. Like if you're else. doing the same ones as last year. Say you moved. Nobody knows that. No, my, my <laughs> elf cookies, I'm going to use the same exact ones as last year because the cutter is the yeah. same. It's the only oh. time of year I can use that cutter. Seriously? So, yes. Um, I might change. I don't know. Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't remember what my ones from last year looked like. I remember I liked them. Yeah. But, I mean, people see them once a year. Yeah. Share your bow place with us, Melissa. Oh, uh, so my, one of my favorite go-to places is Nashville Wrap. Yes. Um, I think that they still have theirs on sale. I, you you want to get the drop down to packaging bows and then look at the pre-tied bows. Yes. They have, and we'll get into this with packaging too, but they are really pretty, like already done bows and they just have a little twist tie on the back. So you heat seal, go to the back. I twist, twist, and then fold down. What do you do? I do that. Yeah. Same thing. Um, but those are great, especially for things like they have really cute burlap ones. And ones with like fun designs, mm -hmm. uh, like striped ones um, and metallic ones. But if you're going just straight like satin pre-tied bows, Amazon's your best bet. They're yes, Amazon's are smaller. Nashville wrap you can get larger, like different sizes. Amazon yeah. it's harder to find larger quantities of the bows in a bigger size. Yeah. And for a Crystal, price. Crystal, we do see your question about how do you narrow down designs. We are going to cover that next week. Yes. It's a great question. Um, I know this is why we have two episodes of pre-sale because there's just, it's so much. It is. It is. Yes. Um, um yeah, you yeah. have to make the samples, begin making bows. It's making, again, I do make, uh, my own bows for parts. 
of each holiday. Mm -hmm. I do use Nashville wraps and all of that as well. But for majority of them, I try and make custom bows. So that is something that is already under works and Halloween is a portion of the way done. So, and, and um, do you have a highlight on how you make your bows? I have a reel, a reel. So we can share the okay. reel over. Yeah. Okay. So she has a reel on how she makes the bows. And I asked Chelsea too, why do you make bows? <laughs> I love it. It's my favorite part of it. And I started it when I was just starting out. So when I was doing my part-time I feel like working. it was really popular like a few years ago when I was first starting was like the custom bows that everybody Right. Was using. Nash Nashville wraps wasn't like what it is yeah. at all. So I used to make a custom bow for every single set. So it coordinated with the color of their set, everything. Like that was part of my packaging. And then when I got to doing so many as a full time, it was just not doable. But I loved the look it brought. And it just gave it such a unique touch in the sense that you can't walk into a store and you can't buy this cookie and you can't buy this box and you can't buy this bow. Yeah. So it just to me was a little extra and it's something I enjoy and I have customers who keep the bows and have the bow collection. I love so that. I know well, it's now you. It, at this point it's a part of your brand. So oh, hundred. Now I, I will not yeah. forego. It is more money up front. I on the other hand never had them and do not want to make them. <laughs> You're like, I don't have that expectation. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. I did not set that expectation. Right. But like to Chelsea's point, she's charging for Correct. that. Yep. You do that. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, last thing about is if you have time or you have children who always want to help you, start stickering your packaging or stamping it. Yeah. If you have one of the stamps, folding boxes, any of that good stuff. Yeah. That's another thing we should add. If you're taking notes right now, go back to your two month out section. Make sure you have enough stickers, like mm -hmm. your label, mm -hmm. your cottage food label, your branding stickers. Make sure you have plenty of those because they go faster than you think. Oh my goodness. They, yeah. they really do. They really do. Yeah. Yeah. That's an easy one. Like just sitting, having your morning coffee, just go ahead and get, the, and it's so much easier to sticker, um, to sticker bags before cookies in there and heat sealed with a bow, the bow scrunches everything. It's so much easier to do it ahead of time right. than later. Do you have a stamp or do you do stickers? I do stickers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you stamp or do I have a sticker? A bow. Which do you prefer? Uh, I like stamps on the boxes. It looks okay. more like finished. Yeah. But I, I cannot get my bags not to smear yeah. with the ink, no matter how long they dry. Yeah. So I sticker the bags stamp the boxes. I just feel like, st I know stamping in the long run saves you money, mm -hmm. but I just feel like it would take longer. It doesn't take longer. Uh, no, once you get into the rhythm of if there, by the way, you guys, if you're getting a stamp, don't stamp the box once it's folded, <laughs> stamp it prior. So that oh, it's just yes. like stamp and fold, stamp and fold. Yeah. Cause it, you don't want to be stamping it when it's folded. Yeah. So, but yeah, once you get into that rhythm, it's like, it flies just as quickly as stickering. Yeah. So, yeah, good. How do you Mike is here. Well, oh, hello. Hello, Mike. Welcome. <laughs> my, for those just joining us, my husband has never missed a live, and he had a work call with his Asia team tonight, and he's like, I'm going to miss it. He's like, wait, what time is it at? Oh, okay, I can join. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike, for fitting us into your schedule. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Um, oh, did you We're, share where you got your stamp? I think it's Twin Soul. I, we can go ahead and, um, if you want afterwards, I can post that into the story. Yeah. And she is absolutely amazing. She, I have a few different ones from her. I think I have six. And. Wow. I know. You can get anything made. So I also, which we didn't put on this, but I stamp my bags, like my pickup bags. Oh, so they have. That idea. Yeah. They have like my business name and then my social media handles on yeah. the bag. That's so it's just. I like that touch to the actual like pickup bag right That's so it already has my branding and stuff on it um but yes she is phenomenal and she has all the cottage food laws for every state so if there's something that your cottage food sticker is missing she will ask you for it she uh, is she's so sweet ah very interesting i like that okay i'm gonna have to check her out all right let's okay see. where are we at um, okay, so now we are two to three weeks out. You yes. have made your samples. 
you are now posting. How early do you post, Chelsea? What's your goal when you're posting? For so, for example, right now, I know for, uh, oh, my goodness, almost the Thanksgiving. No, Halloween is going to be the first week of October. Mm -hmm. So that first weekend, I think it's the third. And have you always done it that way? I usually do it about two weeks. If I'm way ahead of schedule, I'll do it three weeks out. The only time, I think it was 4th of July, that I did the week of, and that was way too stressful for me. Yeah. So. Yes. I always, and then do you, if you don't sell out, mm -hmm. when do you shut it off? Um, I don't think I've let any of my recent holidays go past 24 hours, in all honesty. 24? Oh, like after you open yeah. the sale? Oh, wow. Yeah. Good for you, man. So, um, so for, for me, I at most will post it three weeks mm -hmm. out. Generally, it's about two to two and a half weeks out. Mm -hmm. And then if it does not sell out, I always, so generally my pickups are on like a Thursday or Friday. It just depends on when the holiday mm -hmm. is and what makes sense. Um, and so I don't pre-bake generally. Mm -hmm. I might make a lot of dough and freeze my dough. But I make everything the week of. That's just my personal preference. Mm -hmm. That's not, it, you don't have to do it that way. Um, but because of that, I shut things down on like that Thursday or Friday before mm -hmm. the week. So I will give people generally a week to 10 days unless like something sells out and then it'll shut down. Um, so that way it gives me that weekend to kind of like, okay, collect all my orders together and everything and then bake for that week. So. Right. Generally, yeah, two to three weeks out, you're posting your pre-sales. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because otherwise, you're not going to have a pre-sale. Um, yes. But what that also allows you to do is know, like, okay, so you've posted it. You're far enough out. How are things going? Do we need to post a giveaway real quick to, like, get things rolling? Do I need to market this different? And it also allows you to say, like, okay, maybe I could shut it down and do, like, a pop-up yes you know so you've got definitely. a little bit you've got a little bit of pre-sale stuff but then you could also do a pop-up because there are, there's always 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 last minute people who are like do you have any extras so yes some people make it a habit to always make extras and just have those ready to go for those i don't always i um do i and that's wonderful like if you and that's definitely a strategy is to go ahead and plan like a few extra of every design mm -hmm to have available for the last minute order. Um, and, and, but it also allows you to get all the ingredients you need. If you know for sure you're gonna be running low on, you know, the bags or whatever, it just allows you to plan because yes. that's the thing. Don't wait until the week of and open it and then no, you're not, you're, you're gonna be out of everything and you're gonna be stressing and it's not good. Um, just popping in my mind when we were talking about that for buying your ingredients, yeah, we have fries, which I know is Kroger. So some people have. Okay. Do you guys have Kroger? We have Kroger. Okay. Uh -huh. Kroger fries, any of them, they start to do a sale around like, I don't know if it's always Thanksgiving, Halloween, right before, but they'll do a dollar for butter. So stock up. If you have a deep freezer, you can freeze butter. That's so nice. Yes. My deep freezer is going to be cleared out here this next month, and it will nothing will touch it except for butter and cookies. That's so, awesome. okay. So, do you always buy your butter from Kroger? No, no, fries? unless it goes on sale because then it's just the most cost okay. efficient. Is it the yeah. same? Is it the same brand that you're buying? No, it's a different brand. It's the Kroger brand. It's the Kroger brand. Okay. So what I would say is if you are going to try and take advantage of that, do a test batch because mm -hmm. different butters. So Chelsea's worked with that butter right. before and she knows that. So that's why she can take advantage of that. Don't all of a sudden buy a different butter and plan all your pre-sales around it because the, um, what it's like the butter to fat or the, um, it's the fat, fat ratio can be different and mm -hmm. different brands of butter. So some of them have a little bit more water. And so it can like change your recipe test it out to test yeah please test yeah um, most grocery stores go butter goes on sale at one point or yeah. another yeah. i just know That's fries cool. really like i just hard. always go to costco i always just do costco if it's not on a big sale because i mean yeah. 99 cents i cannot I mean, stick a bucket yeah yeah 
<laughs> um, do you have a stamped bag handy? No, but could we show it in the highlight? Uh, yeah. Maybe tomorrow or something. Mm -hmm. We'll show yeah. the stamped bag tomorrow. Yeah, I'll show the stamp box because the bags I'm not pro at. I do have a stamp bag, but the boxes I stamp for even my custom orders. Yeah. So I'll have that this week. Perfect. Yeah. Um, okay, the other thing goes back to what Chelsea and I talked the last two weeks till we were blue in the face about. Think about planning your life out, guys, because <laughs> it's going to be, if you've never done a pre-sale before, warn whoever else is in your home. Yes. That you will be very busy. You will be cranky. Um, and just try and plan your meals out. Whether it's like, hey, guys, this is going to be a couple of days of takeout. Plan some crock pots. Plan mm -hmm. some freezer meals. See if somebody else in the household wants to take over cooking that night or something like that. Just be re realistic. Mm -hmm um that you know there's a you know you get money but you know you're just <laughs> it takes a lot it does <laughs> it takes a lot yes i start so, prepping my kids i'll probably start when i po post pre-sale like hey remember two more weeks two more weeks and i'll usually like post a little cute countdown like this is cookie week yeah so my kids are now all into it and they fight over who folds boxes and who can sticker God. so okay yeah they love it they just stack in my living room and watch movies don't know how many times chelsea has to like be like it's okay you'll get yes there. they'll <laughs> i know <laughs> you'll get there my kids have been on the journey with me since they were so little they're like is it that time again <laughs> yes and there's so many samples to eat and all of that so yeah they're a hoot and a holler I my poor babies are like, I want to bake with you. And I'm like, it's for a customer, so you can't. I, and so, I know. hey, here's a little tip. If you have little ones and they want to do that, just give them a little chunk of extra dough and some Play-Doh cutters. Yes. Because if it falls on the floor, the dog can eat that. They don't have, they can't eat Play-Doh, but they can There can't you go. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So that's where I was at. Where are we at now? All right. Okay, so our, our ordering is yep. closed now. What happens, Charles? Ordering is done. So your pre-sale is finished. At least a week before your pickups, however you have that scheduled out, print your order forms and make lists for baking. So what do you need to bake? How much of each do you need to bake? How much of every shape do you need to bake? However that works for you to break it down so you make sure that you're not short at the end. Mm -hmm. um, triple count everything. Yes. Because you just get into a rhythm and you're like, oh wait, I thought I already baked that. Count it. Yeah. So yes, be prepared as far as that goes and anything you can do prior to the week of so you can focus on the decorating aspect of it you can mm -hmm. fit into anywhere on these timelines yeah and I would highly highly I mean I don't know a situation where you wouldn't with customs we talk about doing like certain percentages up front and percentages mm -hmm. later pre-sales that's the last thing you want to be doing is chasing people down for money for pre-sales. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. You need to be doing pre-sales should be money up front. You're paying for this custom treat that you're going to get in a week or two. It should be paid for up front, especially when there's customization coming or something like that. Um, because you want to print your orders. You don't want to have to be hunting money down. So mm -hmm. I, the only time I use Square is during pre-sales. And I take, mm -hmm. uh, well, I kind of factor it in, I guess. But because, again, it's I don't have to be hunting them for their Venmo or for Zelle or anything like that that I do for custom orders. But with pre-sale, do some sort of automated, easy system where the payment is already completed. And that's the last, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, I think we had that as one of our questions from somebody this week was, uh, well, <laughs> yes, skipping ahead. Yes. Okay. No, that is 100%. I would say pre-sale is the number one reason why I got my website. I don't use my website for custom orders for payment. I invoice those yeah. separately. But okay. when it came to pre-sale, I finally got to a point where I was like posting them on Facebook or Instagram and being like, let me know your order. And I just could not keep up no. with the amount of volume. It was, I was like, I will pay somebody and the ease of mind of just setting and walking away was well worth it. Yes, I agree. I know I was doing Google forms before, which is still a great free tool, but you st it doesn't cover the payment process. Oh, okay. I've never used Google forms for those. Yeah. It spits out 
out in Excel of like exactly what the order is, but you mm -hmm. still have to do like a Venmo or Zelle or anything like that. Mm. So that's where it just alleviates a lot of that. Yeah. Stress. And then, oh my so then you're in the week of, this is very much going to be different for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I don't always bake everything all at once. A lot of times I will try and tackle the hardest designs, the more intricate designs first, because by the end of the week, you're going to be exhausted. Um, and a lot of times the minis will come near the end of mm -hmm. my process too, just because they're smaller. It's better to like bake those a little bit later. Um, but yeah, how do you kind of do it, Chels? I have to work by designs because yeah. I have the full baker's rack. And it's just whatever can fit on that baker's rack with the lids. Yeah. And then everything, every single one of those cookies has to be packaged before I can bake the next. Set. Which actually, I really like doing that. I've done it both where I make everything and then just one day is packaging. I actually really, really like making one or two designs, packaging those as I'm like baking the other designs or something like mm -hmm. that because it doesn't leave all the packaging till the last day right. which is just a beating and it takes longer and then you're just super stressed about it yeah my husband and family are really good about the heat sealing I'm like as long as you guys just heat seal them I'll add the bows and the final touches and tags and stuff good but I just need everything sealed and then put into bins so that come packaging like the dozens we can grab the pictures and go down assembly line yes yeah um so cookie therapy um I use Square for the orders themselves. So Square, you can set up a really like straightforward, simple website product thing that you can do your pre-sale through. It does take a percentage. Um, it's really minimal. Um, I think it's worth it. But no, I don't do Google Forms and Square, just Square. It's a Square through my website. Perfect. So, yeah, that is that. Yeah, so the flow of that week, just, you know, do what works best for you and get through it. <laughs> yes. You want to survive at the end. Yeah. Okay. And I will say real quick, probably going back to your taking notes. One of the big things that's going to map out my entire holiday week is what day is pickup. Yes. So if pickup yes. is a Thursday, you need to factor that in that you're not going to have mm -hmm. it. I try. And if I can, depending on where the holiday falls, do a Saturday pickup just to give myself extra time. Yeah. Halloween this year is on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. So if you're th thinking this through, because I just finished this thought process, is a lot of people will do Halloween parties on Friday. Yeah. So a Friday night pickup might not work for a lot of people. The or they're having school functions. Yeah. Yes. Or they're having work um, potlucks yeah. or things like that. So it's probably going to have to be like a Wednesday or a Thursday pickup just in order to meet the weekend. So it's something to keep in mind is where your holiday is kind of falling yeah. is going yeah. to be a big, um, at least in my, when I have to book out mine. Yeah. And I guess I haven't even thought through that because I always, and we talked about this last week, we always try and offer two options for pre-sale. For our customs, we tend to offer just one pickup time, but for mm -hmm. our pre-sales, um, we tend to try and offer two. And that's a really good point I might actually now offer a Wednesday and then maybe like a Friday option because then that gives me additional time to work on the Friday pickups right I like right. that but yeah I generally will try and offer a morning pickup option and an evening pickup option along the way mm. um, just because a lot of times there are um, there's somebody in the household sometimes that can pick up during the day after a kid drop off or something like that but then there are definitely the dual working parents who, yes, that's not an option. Nope. So I like exactly. to give them. All, All right. right. Cool. So cookie cutters. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we talked about this with timeline. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like I kind of covered my big points with this is I'm kind of looking at what I already have in my portfolio and if anything's like okay that's over it's done like i've done it enough next on to the next 
um, or if just my my design aesthetic has changed or if I already have a design like scheme in my head that I really want to go with um, then that's kind of where I'm flowing mm -hmm. with what I'm looking for for cookie cutters for me personally and this is not for everybody for me personally, what I have found is I always want to have a mini bundle option. So sometimes that means it's the card with the little mini stuck on it. Sometimes that means it's a little sleeve with three or four minis in it. But I always want at least one mini option for me for that holiday. So this Halloween, I got the Night Owl Icing little ghost face. So I'm excited cute. for this one. I know. So cute. Um, and then. And paint your owns generally do really well for me and my customers. I personally don't enjoy making cookie kits, so I just don't offer them. <laughs> um, but I've always offered paint your own. So I'm generally looking for something that is very straightforward, that this is a witch's hat. This is a pumpkin, something that I can do a lot of lines on and detail on for those. Um, and then I'm looking for something that I can personalize. It doesn't have to be a banner mm -hmm. that like the cookie cutter shop is specifically saying, here's where you put the name. It could be a cauldron. It could be a witch's hat where you put the name on it. Um, but for me personally, I like to have something that's customized. If this is your first pre-sale that Chelsea and I were saying, that can be overwhelming mm -hmm. to tackle uh, and stressful. So maybe that's not your best option. Um, but if you're not going that, then I would say at least have one decent sized cookie, like a, a three and a half to four inch cookie mm -hmm. as a big one, because people want to pair it with a gift card or put it in a bundle with something, um, things like that. So, and then I can kind of go from there. Sometimes I'll do a platter, like for Thanksgiving, I might do platters. For Halloween, I probably won't. Um, I did last year with COVID because people were having a lot of in-home, like small gatherings. Yes. Um, but those are kind of the key things that I am looking for when I'm looking for cookie cutters. Chelsea, what about you? Um, I agree with you on the minis. Minis always are a great option. I try and do an individual, like you said, the one-off. Uh, I do offer dozens for Halloween pretty much every holiday from here on out because I'm thinking like work events. If people are doing potlucks or taking them to schools or just functions like a party that they're showing up yeah. to. So my dozens actually are pretty good sellers for um, Halloween. Yeah. So I'm looking at, and far again, as like I think that, that you've trained your customers to know that. Right. And yeah. They know that's an option. Right. They always know what they're going to get. Like they know there's always going to be a mini option. I do the sleeves. I've never done the one-offs. I've always wondered about those, but the like backer with yeah. it. Um, I always do the sleeve of minis. I try and do like a large personal, not personalized, but single could be at least one. It's usually multiple, yeah. but I always have at least one dozen option. I try and aim Christmas is a whole different beast. So when I'm speaking on this, I'm usually speaking of every other holiday. Yeah. Usually two dozen options if I can make it work because I'll do one higher price and one lower price. Yeah. So that there's still an option for people. Yeah. Um, Monica asks, when you do the dozen, do you do all the same design or it's a mix? It's a little bit oh, of a mix, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I'll do like three or four different designs for the dozen. Yes. Um, Simply Sweet Caroline's as far as how many designs do you offer for pre-sale, we will dive more into that next mm -hmm. week, but I would say generally, I think it also, for me at least, it very much depends on what my, um, my uh, availability is for that workload of that time. Right. Like Halloween, I'm probably not going to offer that many designs mm -hmm. because I just don't want to overload myself this Halloween, so I think it... You definitely want a variety. I think you definitely want something that appeals to um, female versus male for like kid options. Um, I don't know. I, th I would say generally at least if this is your first one, give like four to five options. Yes. Yes. Sense. Yeah. Definitely a good starter. I did yeah. see above asking about the week and before Halloween. Yeah. That could, if that works for your group, 
go with it. I know I'll be doing yeah. boot kits and boot kits will be the weekend before so that people can have time to do those. And that's another thing. If you have to break things up, for example, just starting to think through the next few months, as far as like boot kits, you don't want to give those away the week of Halloween. Cause that's kind of already over and done yeah. with elf on a shelf. You might need to do that's two different things. Like I know. And when do you usually, you and I talked about yeah. this actually. Um, because I think this will be my first year to offer Elf. And so I've heard people will do Elf on the Shelf to pick up with the Thanksgiving cookies. Mm -hmm. Because every household does it differently, right? Oh, my yeah. gosh. Hold up. Mura, you don't know about boo kits? Guys, Girl, I do you not have amazing neighbors? Posting the boo in our highlights tomorrow yeah. morning in our stories. Um, does anybody else not know what a boo kit is? Oh. It's the best. We did this when I was little. Basically, it's like it's like a ding dong ditch, but mm -hmm. you leave, but you leave like a basket of goodies at their doorstep, and they have a little page that says "I've been booed." So after you've been booed and you got goodies from somebody you don't know who it's from, you put it in your window. <laughs> Mara, don't be ashamed. You put it in your window, and so then your job is to do is to boo another one or two houses. So it's a really fun neighborhood activity look for the at, kids to do. Girl, look at you open all these. So we're explaining this. It's so <laughs> Guys, if your neighborhood or your area doesn't already do this, this is a fantastic mm -hmm. way to like kickstart your Halloween pre-sale stuff is to like show people. So we will share in our stories boo stuff. Yes. Um, and I know that there's a bunch of cute like Etsy printable shops that like offer all the stuff with it. But um, generally, like, I think it usually starts around beginning of October, right? Yeah. I, ours starts here probably, like, two weeks before um, Halloween in that sense. But, yeah, we used to do it in corporate to people's desks. Like, yeah. it could be something so simple. So that's where, like, the cookies are kind of like, you've been booed. And they're all, like, little ghosts and pumpkins and just a cute. Yeah. People used to do it with, like, a little liquor bottle. And it's, like, you've been boozed. And then yes. like that. So, mm -hmm. yes. But yeah, it's a great way to get to know your neighbors yeah. or, again, take them up to the school, whatever it might be. But if you are new, like Melissa said, if you pre-make a few of those and kind of like boo your own neighborhood or other people mm -hmm. or shops, then like it gets their product, your product in their hands. So yes, it does. I've never seen. Um, and the other thing real quick I would say, if I know we're already here, you guys are probably already booking customs. Don't book customs for holiday. Oh week. my goodness. Don't do it. I've done it to myself multiple times. I still probably have. I think I have one for something. Um, just don't just don't do it to yourself, guys. Just block it off and tell everybody. I told people on my order form when I opened my books, I will not take custom orders that week. We can book it the week before, you know, and it'll yeah. still be good. I will cut my, I'm about to open up my custom orders for October and November. Mm -hmm. And people that have been with me already know that like those two months, if you have birthdays, I feel awful because the spots fill. And I, I don't know if you guys have been noticing, but I've been already getting pre like people trying to ask. There's a ton of baby showers oh. for October. Oh yeah. I got one or two. So that seems to be the heavy, but yes, do not do that and allow yourself the week after mm -hmm. I, I do as I say, not as I do, because I, know. I only have two weeks in November of custom order. So I go straight into like the craziest two weeks of my life and then it just doesn't end. Yeah. So yeah. I know. Yes. Uh, cookie therapy asking a pricing question. Mm -hmm. We will address pricing next yes. week. It's a great question. Her question is, do you charge the same amount per cookie? Uh, for pre sales you do for customs? The answer is no. Well, yes it, and no. Yeah. Uh, but we'll, address it. we'll address it next week. Hi, Antonia. Thank you for asking that question. Join us next week because we will be covering yes. that for sure. Perfect. Um, my other thing on what purchasing cookie cutters, something that I have um, really started doing, if you guys are seeing, you're going to start being flooded with really cute Halloween stuff on your Instagram mm -hmm. feed. Mm -hmm. Remember to save stuff that speaks to you. Yes. I have folders for all of 
the holidays Mm -hmm. and I save everything and I go back to them and I have definitely bought cookie cutters from like five years ago, not new releases because I'm like, oh yeah, I loved that design or something. So that's also another way to be thinking about how you want to buy your cookie cutters. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so lead us into our favorite topic, (laughs) the packaging, the packaging discussion, guys, this is really, (laughs) it's like the, it's the chicken or the egg. Do you get the cookie cutters first and then decide on the packaging for it? Or do you have packaging and figure out what cookie cutter can fit in it? It is, it is the forever battle. Um, so I, I'm not going to say we have all the solutions for you on this yet. One day, guys, we have plans to have full on answers to these things for you. For right now, um, we're just going to kind of share our philosophies on like how we've gone about kind of doing it and mm-hmm. um, what's working for us and what we prefer. So Chelsea, I'll hand it to you to tell me kind of like what sort of things you like to have on hand how you generally like to have a ratio, like how many things are boxed versus bagged, that sort of deal. So I have, from doing so many holidays, as you guys will see, if you're new, these are your first few pre-sales. You don't just buy small quantities of the boxes. They usually come in 100 or 200, depending on where you're buying from. So with that being said, I have a huge overflow of boxes currently. And I will try and pull from those to be like, I don't let packaging dictate my sets. I create what I want to create. And then I'm like, as my samples, hmm, okay, what is going to fit kind of where? Right. And it's just like a game of Tetris in my mind is, can this box work? If not, the bigger cookies, like individual, your minis can go into like a sleeve or an individual bag with the ruffle on the top and a beautiful bow. Yeah. It can be presented adorable. So don't think that everything has to have a coordinating box. Don't stress about it. No. Um, And I will say, since we have some time before a holiday, and if you are ordering from BRP Box, or again, if you've already ordered and you want to try this for your next round, is that they offer like sample boxes that you can buy a smaller quantity of. So you can have those on hand and just kind of pull from them as your samples for holiday so you can order a larger quantity. Yeah, I would also highly suggest if you're not already on a Facebook page for your community and mm-hmm. have other cookiers, or even if you know other cookiers on Instagram that are in that are close to you, join together and say, hey, do you want to go in on this box and this box and we'll split the quantity because you might not need all 100 of them. We have a lot of that that goes on in, um, the North Texas mm-hmm. Facebook page or, or just people who have extras and sell them because it is, it's scary. It's a big, it's like a hundred something dollars for these boxes. Now oh, yeah. you remember you will be making a lot of money over the holidays generally. So if this is your first pre-sale, I would say the cookie cutters that you're buying actually get your ruler out and draw them on the piece of paper, right? So take a piece of paper. If you're thinking that you want to do two in a box, you just got to do the due diligence of like literally doing the dimensions that you just purchased of the cookie cutter. Going to, I think BRP and Paper Mart are the big box. Yeah, and clear boxes. Yes. Yes. And clear boxes. Yeah. Yeah. And even Amazon. I love the Amazon for the the three cookie box that I do all the time. but just you got to draw out the dimensions of everything. And I would say just try buying one of the sizes Mm -hmm. for this particular holiday season and see how that works for you. And what's going to happen is the next holiday season, you'll buy another one and you will start to have a collection. But I think just to Chelsea's point, don't stress out about the box. When you are listing your pre-sales for people to purchase, say packaging may vary mm-hmm. based on availability. I say so that bows way, may vary. If, so whatever I photograph yes. with, you might not get that bow. Yeah. So that way, um, I definitely, I'm a fan. I think that you should be um, 
showing people the packaging when you're selling it mm -hmm. because that is part of the price. Um, so I'm a big proponent of that, but just communicate, 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 tell people it could vary depending on the price. And then if the box comes in and it's too big, put shred, mm -hmm. just put shred in there, add a mini to it or something, change your stuff up. But there are just, there's so many ways to just not stress about it. What, um, what's kind of your ratio of like, how many do you usually have that are boxed versus bagged? I couldn't answer that. It's going to vary highly depending on every holiday and what I decide to do. Yeah. So I don't have like, you're, again, it just kind of what falls into what. Some holidays might be yeah. like Valentine's Day ended up being heavily bagged because it was a lot of individual cookies. Yeah. And then other, like Easter was almost everything in a box. So really depends. Yeah. But, um, um a, a new cookie or why do most pros not offer shipping? Is it the packaging? Are you referring to cookiers not offering shipping? And I get the answer to that would be most of us are not legally allowed to based on our cottage food laws. Uh, sweet treat envy. If your cookies spread, go a little bigger when you measure. Also, keep in mind the individual heat sealed bag adds to the size of the box. Yes, absolutely. Such a great point. Thank you. So many times I'm like, oh, this box works for my sample. Like after I make it, then I bag it, and I'm like, yeah, not so much now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. There's been multiple times that I change up if I'm gonna bag it or box it. Mm -hmm. So definitely. So yes. yes. Awesome. All right. Well, I mean, we've been talking for an hour, so let's here we are. Get our wonderful guest. Let's get on Amanda. Here. Yes. On, and guys. hey, guys, I just want to let you know, I do see we've actually had a handful of people, and I don't know if it's by accident, requesting to go live. We probably won't have time um, today to do that, but next week we might. But thank you guys for That's asking to go live with us. Exciting. I know. Let me get. It, Miss Amanda, I'm here. It's coming, girl. In the meantime, I'm gonna get our um. And for if people are just hey. now joining, hey. say hi. hi girl. Welcome. How are you guys? Great. We are. Hey, how are you? Thanks for listening Good. to our pre-sale talk. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. We are excited to have you, and thank you for doing the code for us, you guys. Again. She didn't have to do that. This is her small business. So please go and support her as much as you can. So we are excited, but awesome. Um, Melissa, are you ready? Can I, I am so it? ready. Sorry, I was getting our wheel ready to pick oh, our perfect. random winner. Perfect. Okay, awesome. Well, why Melissa is doing that, <laughs> tell us about yourself. Give us, give us the background of who you are. Okay. Sounds good. Um, well, I started cookies. I was doing cookie orders in 2018 just for fun. Um, I've been, I was in, uh, I was a fashion designer for about 10 years. Um, oh I did God. apparel, like junior, like kids apparel, juniors apparel, old lady apparel. And then, um, but most of the time in fashion and all the way up until the end, I was doing swimwear. Mm -hmm. And that was really like, that was my passion. That was the the best part of fashion for me. I had a lot of fun doing that. Um, and then, you know, COVID happened and like 95% of the fashion industry lost their job. It was just a really crazy time. And um, the whole time I'd already, I'd still been doing um, cookies just for fun. And at that point I was like, well, I'm just going to do this because it's a lot of fun. And um, I, I've never really, it's kind of weird because as a cutter, a cutter shop company, I've never actually like, I never really bought cookie cutters mm -hmm. because since I knew how to de design things, I would just design things on my, like on my digital program and then I'd hand cut everything. And then from there I was You're like, amazing. well, I want a specific, I like, want a specific design. So then I'm like, I'm going to get a 3d printer and it just kind of like all like snowballed from there. Cause I was like, well, I, I cut almost frozen dough. I like when my dough is like really, really hard. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I was getting tired of hand cutting and I didn't want to deal with like finding a cookie cutter that could cut through frozen dough that was like strong enough. So I just built my own and then I'm like, well, I put all this work into the construction. Let's just sell this. <laughs> so, like that's how, <laughs> that's how nice. do it. 
yeah, that's how Night Owl Icing happened. Um, and I really love it because it's like a really good combination of designing and creativity. But then I get to like the cookie community is really great. And um, so I still I feel like I still have my foot in designing. But it's funny because I don't really have that many fashion cookie cutters. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's because I'm like burnt out and I need like a break for fashion. But I do love it. It's, it's so much fun. I really love it. I can't wait for swimwear cutters, like a whole nother series, I mean, you know, like. I know, I need to get on there. I, like, I I was looking at my shop the other day, my only swimwear cutters are from, are, were designed for a collab for, um, with Chantel from the Cookie Gallery, because she's just a super amazing child. She's actually a fashion designer as well. Oh, wow. And that's actually, totally. yeah, that's how we, we kind of, we got to know each other and we're like, wait, you're a fashion designer? And she's like, wait, you're a fashion designer? <laughs> so we kind of like, that's why we started collabing because we had, uh, we work with all the same programs and it's really, really just seamless to work with her. Um, but yeah, all of my swimwear is from her, but I was like, one of my friends from my, from the fashion industry was like, how come you don't have swimwear designs? Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> but um I, okay, I'll do it next summer. <laughs> there you go. Yes, please. I had a. I love that. Quick um, question: How did you get night owl icing as your yeah. name? Where did that come from? Um, I've always been a night owl. I've always like I always like sleep really late. Even when I was younger, I was just I don't sleep early like ever. And um, especially when I was doing cookies for mm -hmm. orders, it was always after my work day. So I'd come home from from designing, and I'd come home and design cookies so it was like it just kind of fit and I didn't want to have anything that said cookies in it I don't know it's just kind of it just kind of felt natural so I like that it. yeah I love it. and I love the new logo the new look. yeah my friend Ashley made that for me I was talking to her and I was like I really I feel like my logo is kind of outdated and I want something like fresh and modern and she's like i got you i got you <laughs> it's beautiful. So it was awesome I yeah i think it's very thank you, know. thank you. Uh, i love it so as far as you said that you were hand cutting a lot so yeah did you what do you feel like is the kind of the gap that you're filling for like cookie cutters in the world right now um well i don't know i guess I've noticed that when I do release something that's like very cutesy, um, those don't tend to sell as much as my more um, like modern Edgy. trendy type of cutters. Yeah, I've noticed that. So maybe that's the gap. Um, yeah. I really, my my first priority when I started the shop was that I just wanted it to be them to be really strong because my priority for myself when I made it was that it could cut through like really hard dough. So that's, that was my deal. And they then, are um, so, so sturdy. And yeah. I feel like you were also one of the first um, cookie cutter companies that started putting your name and like the, the design or the cutter the design. design and stuff on the side of it, which I am so thankful <laughs> for. I kept asking people, I'm like, can you please put it on there? I'm like tired of looking through my receipts <laughs> when I'm going to tag. Yeah. yeah. Or no knowing what the shape is there's so many I'm yes. like wait what shape was this again yeah I, yes I, honestly I did that for myself because I have a memory span of like two seconds and <laughs> I don't know how I don't know how shops like how, don't label them because I constantly look at my labels when I'm packing orders I'm like wait what is this again oh and I I, I literally remind myself because I don't remember sometimes because there's a lot of shapes in my shop. So it's like, yes. and sometimes there's like just a little bit of a difference. So it really helps. And then especially for the sizing, um, I love having the sizing on there. I'm definitely not the first shop to have labels. A lot of shops do have labels. Mm -hmm. um, so, but really when I started labeling things, it was for myself, even when I wasn't selling and I was doing it for myself, I was labeling it. Yeah, so, thank you for it. Yeah. We, we <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I always, I whenever I try to do something with my cutter, with my shop, I always try to think of like when I was doing cookies, what would help me the most? Oh, yeah. And hopefully, like hopefully that helps you guys yeah. now that I'm not doing cookies. Uh, yes, it does. <laughs> Super. Yeah. Helpful. Um, to Gobel, I think. Don't. Uh, will you gobble? Okay. Um, will y'all be at Cookie Con Orlando? Chelsea and I will not. Amanda, will you? What was that? Are you doing Cookie, Cookie Con? Con? Oh no, maybe next year. I I do want to go, but maybe next year. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. 
All right. Well, tell us a little bit about your design process. We were just talking about how we design sets for pre-sale, but the perspective of a cutter shop, we feel bombarded by a ton of designs. How do you guys, like, how do you figure out what is going to be needed for the upcoming seasons or in general? Um, well, I, I kind of feel like my background in design might help a little bit because oh, sure. um, I'm constantly like looking out for what could be a trend coming up. Yeah. And I also do have access to, I still have access to my, um, it's called WGSN and it's a trend forecasting website. Oh, <laughs> and so it, it, nice. it, yeah, it, like that's what I used to use when I, when I was in fashion and it has like all of the trend forecasts for like the upcoming year and all the way up until next year. Oh and um, it all, so it's, all that's a good fashion. tool. Yeah. It, all it does. Starts with the yeah. Fashion. It's, it's a good tool because yeah you definitely I get to pull little things and I could see if I could see that there's like a little witchy vibe going on that I think is going to hit for the end of the year then that's kind of where I go and um, also I kind of just I, I like to design things that I would like to use exactly. <laughs> so um, that's kind of what I do and um, as I'm getting busier, I do have a little bit less time to design. So if I do purchase artwork, I make sure to credit the artist on the listing. And I do try to um, modify it so that if somebody else purchases that same design, there won't be any conflict of like having the same sh the same designs in different shops, which it does happen. And that's, you know, that's just what happens with commercial art. But yeah. um, I do try to modify a little bit when I can. <laughs> <laughs> and you've definitely had your experience working with like collabs mm -hmm. with different mm -hmm. artists doing um like their decorating classes and things yeah. like that yeah i do love that it started with maya and mara for um they weren't doing a class but it was the, the california sweater weather yes and then um then i worked with sugar vibes and then pinar i think those are my three first the three first ones That's amazing. and then it just kind of it kind of grew from there and i just ha i think it helps too because when i was doing cookies, I, you know, you make friends pretty fast in the cookie world because everybody's just so, like, everybody's your hype girl. Like, everybody's really excited <laughs> for you. And so that kind of was a nice transition when I was doing cookies into cutters because um, then I was already friends with a lot of people. Not a lot. I'm not going to, like, try to sound like I'm super popular. But, like, <laughs> I, was, I was friends with people who did classes. So yeah. it, it helped, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's fun. I and you offer more than just the cutters in your shop. Too. I'm so excited yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah, I started, um, I, I felt like I needed something that would be easy to just like pull off the shelf, not something that needed to be made every time. Sure. So I, and I wanted to expand to be more helpful for bakers, just different things to be like kind of a one-stop shop. So I, I just released this new baking mat that I've been working on for a really like too long of a time. Mm -hmm. And then um, there's like, some like metal scribes in there and just you know basic things that you guys might need like pot holders and all that but, yes and the uh, borderland yeah. baker or the borderland bakeries uh brushes i got yeah. those for um cookie cookies class mm -hmm. they are so good i love them. i love those brushes yeah They're my so favorite is there is her um like her little really fine detail brush is really nice yes. But like my favorite her. Borderlands thing from her in general are like her piping bags are super strong and like super, they're like buttery, they're like silky. Ooh, yeah. And um, mm -hmm. and I love their, their her little eco towels or cellulose have, towels yes. are really, they're amazing. Them, yeah. They're so good. And like I, I used to use so many paper towels mm -hmm. and I don't mm -hmm. anymore because of those. I have, I have like 10 of them and you just like wet them and the color doesn't bleed through because you know with paper towels if you're dabbing wow i'm gonna um, like a paper make another purchase. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i would recommend it <laughs> yeah if you're like dabbing your paintbrush or you put your your piping bag on it the colors don't bleed through it just it's perfect i love it i love that so good yeah. well, i'm super excited I got the cauldron with the floral detail yeah and i also got the uh, well i got a bunch of stuff but the one i'm most excited about is the cauldron and then the um the mold with the skull oh. So I'm yeah. planning to like incorporate that into the flowers on it. That's going to be so cute. I can't wait to see it. Okay. I love what you did with your the platter last year for Halloween. I know. Oh, I know what? I love your platters, girl. <laughs> I, I love yes. it. I love those creative platters. Um, okay, so, okay, one of the biggest 
questions and we addressed this earlier and I tried to address it. You saw me, Amanda. <laughs> Why can we never buy the size that we want? <laughs> Why can't you just read our mind and do it? I feel like so well, cutter sizes are so um, I feel like cutters are so mysterious because like you can get a four inch cutter of like, you know, one design and a four inch cutter of a different design and they'll look like different sizes. But I think it's just because it just comes down to like the area, the overall area that the cutter takes up and you really have to be good about just have a, a ruler with you. So when you see the dimensions that the cutter shop has listed, because I always have listed the height and width. Yeah. Um, just to help you guys out as much as possible. So just get the ruler out and like make a square just to get kind of a general idea. But then you also have to take in into consideration if you're getting, if you're buying like a witch's broomstick yeah. and you get like a five inch cutter, that's still going to look really small because I it's going like, to be really I feel normal. like we need to just start getting pictures of the cutter on your hand. Can we I have really like small hands though. <laughs> Me too. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe like next to a quarter or something. Buy a fake hand and just like <laughs> have it. <on> <laughs> like, I, I could probably put it next to like a quarter, maybe, or what else is a standard or measuring tool? Like no. Just like like gridded paper on this mm -hmm. or something like that. that yeah, maybe something? that could work I too. Don't I don't know. Luckily, I yeah. haven't had too many. I do get no, stories that are like, oh, it's you, too big. Yeah, it you doesn't include, happen too much. I know. You include the height and the yeah. width, which yeah. is helpful. So, yeah, we just have to. Oh, a dollar bill. That's smart. That That's is a good cool. idea. Yeah, no. <laughs> you, to, you just lay it on top of it. Yeah, that is a good idea. Oh. I don't know who said that, but whoever said that, thank you. <laughs> good idea. You came in strong with those. Awesome. I, know. I love that we're all like, what's money that we do? <laughs> um, Everybody loves money. <laughs> I mean, we're all here for a poker card. See, a great suggestion. I do know when I was going through everything, we constantly see the STL files for printers yeah. for things to print at home. Do you feel like that's really like taking over largely versus yeah. people ordering the physical cutters? You know, that's... Is, Everybody owns a 3D printer now. I feel like it's so common. Um, not everybody, but it is more common. And I was kind of wondering about that, but it's still like huge majority is physical cutters. Um, I mm -hmm. do get, there are a handful of STLs coming through every day, but, um, but then I do get like panicked emails because it's like they meant to get the physical cutter, but it's uh, STL. Uh, so yeah. it, that's why I try to keep my listings separate. I yeah. try not to have the STL as, as an option on the regular one because it's easy to mix up and I totally get it, especially because the photos are all the same. But um, yeah, no, thankfully the regular cutters have still been strong, but it is kind of nice because STLs are, I don't have to print or bag anything or like box anything. So it's like yeah. they just get sent along. <laughs> Do you have well, any I feel like too the quality wise is going to be different? Yes. It is, yeah. It really is gonna depend on your printability mm -hmm. and um the the print profile that you guys set up. And but for the most part, I haven't had any actually at all, I haven't had any anybody really message me saying that they're having issues printing. So I think it must be going okay. I don't know. And some people will um have on their stories they'll show the stl that they printed and they they turn out well so i think it's people are dialing it in pretty well do you have any suggestions what? on a 3d printer for anybody like i don't own one for example i don't either so either. would there be something that like you suggest for anybody who might be looking into that a brand yeah or something? definitely um especially for starting out um if you, you just get it on amazon for free shipping it's um ender three they have like different versions. Ender 3 Pros are really good. Um, I have many Ender 3 Pros, but they're all uh, they're all up, like updated and I have a lot of, why am I blanking out on what the word is? They're all customized. So they're definitely not stock. So there's a lot of upgrades on mine, but if you're just, if you need a printer and you just want something affordable and it's like a workhorse and it's not gonna quit on you, 
Ender 3 Pros are perfect and they're on Amazon and they're really, they're the most affordable for sure. How much are they? I think they're like 200 or something. They, it like fluctuates a little really bit. come down. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I it remember fluctuates when... a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then there are other, there are other printers. Um, I'm not sure if they're more affordable, but there are other printers that have like circular beds or like small beds uh, or like that's what, you know, like the size that you can print. But the problem with that is that you can never do like a bigger cookie. So you, a lot of the times those beds are like a four inch max. So you can't have like a five inch cookie cutter Ooh. or, you know, Ooh, things like that. So, so it's like when you're looking into buying a cookie, uh, a 3D printer, just make sure you take into consideration the size of the print bed because you want to be able to have variations in your sizing. Nice. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, are, do you guys have any other questions for Amanda before we let her go? Any more coming through? Amanda, do you still bake? Man, I have tried to not sign up for cookie collabs anymore because it's so hard for me to keep up with it. Yeah. But I love cookie collabs and you I don't really want miss the, it. The collab police on me. <laughs> Well, I mean, we, we, I just hosted with Maya and Mara the 90s themed collab. Yes, that was so Yeah, fun. it was I, amazing. I was Everybody, a yeah, it was a walk down memory lane. It was so much fun. But then that was like all this craziness with my shop happened and I had to dip out of my own collab and I felt so bad. Uh, but it's like, so I was like, ladies, so sorry, I can't do this. But they were really understanding and, um, of you know, they things were. happen, I, yeah. I, I things happen, them. but, I, get that. Well, uh, but I, I really miss cookies. The last <laughs> thing that I wanted to ask about is I know that you have a new method of like cookie cutters that are going to be coming out that are even stronger than your old ones. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So, so the, the machines actually just got delivered today and they're like taking up a lot of space in my garage right now. Um, uh, I had, I had to, I had them and then I lost them and then I had to re like invest in new ones. So now they're here, but it's probably going to take a couple more weeks to get fully set up. Um, but yeah, the end product is a hundred percent nylon and it is a hundred percent food safe and, um, and non-toxic, of course, and it's it's just super strong. The way the cutter is made, the the material is fused together with lasers, so Ooh. it's like extremely bonded. And um, filament cutters, the regular cut cookie cutters that you can get right now, they are super strong. Um, totally not bashing that because I'm still going to be using my filament cutters, <laughs> my <laughs> filament printers. Um, that's a totally strong way of doing doing it but it's just this fusion uh the one that i'm going to be doing is like is really good too because it's also going to be dishwasher safe um so you can just like mm. toss them all into, you can toss them all into the dishwasher um they're really strong and i did a bunch of tests like strength tests on them i like stood on it i jumped on it. on it yeah. yeah so it's like i'm really excited about to get to get things going and um I think it'll be really fun to just not have to, like, it's just one less thing you have to worry about. Just toss them in your dishwasher. Dude, I'm, that's yeah. amazing. When I, I moved here, we obviously had to move my cookie room. So it literally went in like our packaging thing for one day in Arizona heat. Uh -huh. And a huge majority of my cutters disformed yeah. overnight. Yeah. And I'm, still to this day going through like hot water soaking reshaping right. everything so that it's is so, it's tough it's good it's really great though with filament that you can reshape them and not everybody knows that you can do that a lot of people mm -hmm. just throw it away sometimes it is like beyond saving oh, oh yeah <laughs> but sometimes yeah. it's too messed up but yeah you can definitely save them like what you said with hot water um mm -hmm. what i've done before is i i use a kitchen torch um like yeah. a creme brulee torch yeah. Um, you can just like torch them really quick, mm -hmm. just really quick. You have to keep it moving just enough to heat it up and it gets like pliable and soft and then you can fix it. So yeah. it's really great. Um, yeah. So these they're they're are good, good, sound amazing. good options. Really quick, Amanda, uh, Sweet Home Bakes asked, if we find a cutter on your site that doesn't have a corresponding STL file, can we request that? Absolutely. I, I totally encourage you guys to reach out to me. Um, 
if I don't lately, I've noticed there's been a couple, not lately, but there's been a couple emails that have been sent to me where it goes to my spam for some reason. So if I don't, if you don't hear from me, please reach out, DM me on here on Instagram and I will get that set up for you as soon as I can. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Well, before you go, I'm going to go ahead and select our random winner. This is from our stories of all you guys that shared all of our um that we were going to be going live tonight so yes uh, woohoo spinning 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 and I, love the <laughs> I love that noise i know spoonful of sugar bakes are you on oh i love that handle um, name that's really cute no, that's super cute handle name let me pop on here quickly so you will be getting a gift card to night owl ice from me awesome. and you're gonna get your, your discount for the next yay week. oh yes, yeah double up gone. yes <laughs> yay congratulations thank you. thank you for sharing and you guys if you don't know each week we post our little episode in our um stories Story. and then if you reshare that and you tag us you're in the drawing that's awesome that's, Amanda, i love that you guys do you. that Thank you so, so, so much for we joining us. We appreciate you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. I was honored. Anytime. Congrats on, congrats on the shop relaunch. You guys, we have through what, like midnight Friday? I'll double check the time, but yeah, it should be midnight Friday or like 11.59. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, so the cookie chat, all caps, gets you 15% off your entire order. Night Owl icing, go take advantage. I'm going to make a second um, purchase now. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Amanda. I think you have to like oh, check out. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Thank you. you guys. Have a nice night. Thank you. Oh, awesome. We're here. We're here. Okay. So we wanted to address, let me see if we didn't like answer any of these. <laughs> Um, okay, so you guys sent in some questions mm -hmm. earlier, so we just want to quickly address some of those questions. If you guys have additional questions here related to timeline, cookie cutters, and packaging, if it is pricing or design or any of that stuff, it'll be next week. But go ahead and shoot that here. The code for Night Owl Icing 15% off is all caps, the cookie chat. Yes. So you'll place it when you check out. Correct. Okay. Okay, Chelsea. Yes. Do you see a question that we did not answer on our list? Um, I feel like we kind of hit on most of these. Mm -hmm. um, I know Two Cute Cookies asked, how do I train my customers to order when I actually run my pre-sale and not ask last minute? I will say as a new cookie, you kind of just every holiday consistency is going to be your key as far as the way you advertise it, the way you lay it out, the way you just pre-type it every single time will hopefully hope, hopefully help, hopefully hope, wow, hopefully help your customers to know what to expect. You're always going to get new people filtering in here and there who aren't familiar with the way you do things, and that's okay. Just educate them for next time. But I feel like that is definitely something that the more you post and stay on top of it or like, this is how it's going to look, this is how it's going to roll out, it lessens the wondering and sets up that expectation. Yeah, it definitely does. And the more that you do them, the more people know like, oh, I missed out last right. time. Like, I want to be on top of yes. it. Um, setting, setting reminders on mm -hmm. your social media, sending out emails saying like, it's going to go live tomorrow or like, you can order this day. Um, I used to send out like, it's 24 more hours that you can order. If you don't have an email list yet, get a free MailChimp, MailChimp email list. Um, be doing that, be doing your Facebook, be doing your Instagram, right. I would say. Um, o Kit and Design Company said, do you freeze cookies for pre-sale ahead of time to shorten your timeline? I do not, I have in the past though. Um, it's absolutely something you could do just like anything test mm -hmm. make sure you test i actually have some in the freezer right now from st patrick's day mm -hmm. <laughs> because i wanted it had um uh tweets cookie connection pen on it and gold splatter oh nice and i wanted to make sure that i could test how that de so i actually need to take that out 
this week, just so I know. So just test, test, test. Make sure that you like how your recipes working, how your designs are working. But freezing, I mean, freezing is a great tool to do mass amounts Correct. of it. Correct. Have you Correct. ever done it? Else? I have, yes. For both ways. All upside down every single way there is. Yes, I've tried it. So, but yes. I did test them first. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Messy Bun Cookie Company. If you hit your max volume early on, should you raise your prices next time or prep more to give more volume? That's a great question. What do you think? Let's see. I I don't know. I might have a different opinion. I, I think if you are new and you're really trying to hit like what price range to do, then yes, that could be. I know now, now I've kind of had an establishment of my holiday sales. My holiday sales are a very big sales opportunity for me. I'm pretty confident in my pricing on it so i will just allow for more volume next time so i might do it a little bit backwards but if you're a new cookie i would definitely say at that point maybe raise it 50 cents or 75 cents for the next round and yeah. see if it starts to level out if it's still selling out you might just be in high demand yeah and that's the thing we're only one person right mm -hmm. we can only make so much and the demand could be super super high mm -hmm. so i you just got to balance you don't want to completely price yourself out and there are also certain holidays that sell way differently oh, than yes. other yes. holidays yes my, my easters always do really well but there are other people like literally in a different suburb than me they're like my my easter sucked you know so it's just it just depends on your clientele so i would definitely um, I think that's a great point, Chelsea. If you're still like trying to figure out your pricing and you're constantly selling out, then mm -hmm. yeah, like mm -hmm. bump it a little bit. But you also don't want to like completely price yourself out of the market, right? Because there is a cap on it. I mean, it might be one there cookie, is. it might be only two cookies, so you have to keep that in mind. But again, high demand is not a bad thing to be in. No, the more practice you get, the faster you get at certain designs. And I will say, when thinking through holiday designs. I know we're going to kind of touch on more of this next week, but I think Melissa, like think of your customs. What is maybe an easier skill level for you? Don't try something new for a holiday and be like, I've never done um, sugar veil. Yes. I've never airbrushed something. Don't all of a sudden start airbrushing on a holiday. Yeah. So keep that in mind, but yeah. yeah. And don't be doing a lot of projector work unless it's like name customization. Yeah. <laughs> Because that is when that projector dies, and you're like, yeah, oh, always, always, yeah, yeah. Never and fails. I'll show, maybe I'll try and show you guys um, an easy technique if you're if you do have a freak out and your projector dies during like customization during holiday week. There you go. Because uh, there are workarounds. But yeah, awesome. I think, I think we hit all the other ones. Oh, unless there's one that I'm missing. Uh, I don't think so. I think that's good, bro. Awesome. Do you guys have anything else? I really have my own projector for busy time. Have you done holiday sales with it? And how has that worked out for you? Let us know. And I would definitely get a backup. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You're going to be like Chelsea collecting a drawer of projectors. <laughs> okay. Are we ready? Yes. Fake of the week. Fake of the week. I'm going to post that Fake song every single time we do that. I know. <laughs> All right. Here's Miss Chelsea's. Oh, oh, we you didn't tell them. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Tell them what we're doing this week. All right. So our bake of the week, since wonderful Amanda was so kind to give us the discount code, we chose some sets that people used Amanda's cutters. So this is how we want to honor her. Yes. So this is Odo Cookie Co. This is such a cute set. Isn't it? It's I adorable. And I, I feel like this really fits Amanda's whole vibe and stuff she was talking about. Oh, but that scrunchie cutter, so cute. I have that in my it's cart. Scrunchie. I need to add that to my cart. I literally am waiting on a scrunchie that looks like that to come in the mail. <laughs> yes. So I feel like that's for bridal showers, for um, birthday parties, bachelorette, baby shower. Yes. Like it's just, it's such a cute first birthdays. I know. 
But oh, I love I love a chocolate cookie, by the way. Too. Oh, I know. I, Chocolate's my weakness. It's, it's one of my favorite things on gingerbread or chocolate cookies. I try and do minimal icing. I know you can. It's so much prettier when you can see through. It gives you like the yeah. backdrop. And yeah. I just think it's it tastes better with less icing. Okay, this one is mine, from Cattail Confections. Oh, so pretty! Isn't that stunning. I love those. And you know me, flowers. I love using I love using a cutter in a creative way. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely a floral cutter. But look at the little strawberries on top. And now I do want to mention that this is, I think, from a class. I don't know exactly. She referenced a class, but I don't think the entire design is from the class. So, Correct me so if I'm cute. wrong, if anybody knows. But it's so cute. Yes, I love that with the little strawberries. She has some beautiful um, floral mm. cutters in mm -hmm. her shop. Amanda does. Yes. That's what we got. Okay, well, I feel like we've talked about next week's topic multiple times. Yes, y'all know what's coming. If you missed it, it's pre-sale part two, part two, and um, we'll be talking, what are we talking? Pricing, designing. Pick up. Um, pick up. Yes. Flow of stuff. So, yeah. All that's of that. what we got. And again, we'll put in the stories this week a little question box if you guys want to send in your questions so we can really narrow it down and make sure that we are hitting on everything that you guys might want to know about that. I'm so excited to see everybody's Halloween designs. I know. They're going to start glowing. I know it. I was looking at that and I was like, oh gosh. No pressure. Here we go. Though. No pressure. Here we all feel we it. Go <laughs> <laughs> it's, and it begins. I know. Come September first, I'm like I'm just disappearing from the world. See you all in January. Seriously, I know. I already planned our date nights because I was like, if we don't plan them now, they're not gonna happen. You are so good, <laughs> so good. But awesome. All right. Well, we talked to you all for an hour and a half. Thank you guys. If, if there's anything we missed, send it to us in our DMs, and we will get to it as quickly as we can. But I am Chelsea with Rolling in the Dough AZ. I'm Melissa with Missy P Sweets. May your cakes never be dry. And your icing be shiny and crater-free. Have a great night, guys. Bye, y'all.